Brachos Daf Mem Aleph discusses the halachos of the correct order in which brachos should be made. We are saying that there was a machlokes about it. Tomorrow we'll try to discuss if that's talking about we have different types of brachos, or if you're talking about where you have different types of fruits that are the same bracha. Then the Gemara will uh, discuss within the Shiva's Haminim which fruits take precedence over others. And after that, the Gemara will get into the discussion of the correct brachos on foods that come in the middle of the Suda, which ones are included in the bread and you don't get a bracha at all, which ones are not included, which ones get a bracha rishona, which ones get a bracha achrona, which, can, which ones get both, and which ones get none. The Gemara begins by discussing the machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim as to which food you say a bracha on if you have a number of foods in front of you. We saw that the machlokas was that Rabbi Yehuda said you say a bracha on the one which is Shiva Saminim, and the Rabbanan say you say the bracha on, which, on the one which you prefer. So the Gemara has a machlokas amirayim. What is the case of this machlokas? According to one opinion, it's a it's a machlokes of Yitzchak and Ravami. We're not sure which one is which. According to one opinion, the machlokes is in a case where all the foods in front of you are the same bracha, like you have olives and you have apples. They're both eights. And the question is, which one gets priority that you should say the bracha on that food? And the other understanding of this machlokes is is that we are talking about where there are different brachos in front of you, and the question is. Which bracha do you say? And the assumption is you say only one bracha, and that works for everything. Now, the Gemara begins by quoting Ula. Ula seems to hold of the opinion that the whole machlok is only where all the brachas are the same. And if there were different brachas, you would have to say bracha on everything. Each one would get its own individual bracha. So the Gemara asks that we have a b'risa that says differently. It quotes a machlok between the Rabbanan and Rabbi Huda. And it says as follows, the Rabbanon say that if you have in front of you an olive and a radish, the olive is a eight, the radish is a dama, you only make a bracha on the radish. So clearly, Rav, the Rabbanon's opinion is referring to a case where you had different brachas, you only make one bracha. So that's the case that the Machlokas is in. The Gemara says, no, this mission is talking about a different issue altogether. This mission is talking about where the only reason you're eating the olive is in order to counteract the sharpness of the radish, and therefore the olive is only complementing the radish, you're only eating it, you're only eating it because of the radish, it's tough and subservient to the radish, and it doesn't get a bracha at all. But really, if you were eating two separate foods, each for their own value, you would say a separate bracha on each. The Gemara says, well, then why would it be to argue on that? Why, did, why does... Rabbi Yehuda say that you say the bracha on the olive because it's Sheva Saminim. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't hold that if something is tafel, it's serving another food, that it doesn't get a bracha of its own. It's included in the bracha of the main thing that you're eating. We have a bracha where he explicitly says so. He says that if you're eating an olive and it's only coming to counteract the radish, it doesn't get its own bracha. It's included in the bracha of the radish. So Gemara says that you have to edit this Mishnah. It says the thing you have to add in words and it says the following thing. If somebody had an olive and a radish, he says the bracha on the radish and that covers the olive. That's if the main reason you're eating the olive is to help with the radish. If not, then you say a bracha on each of them separately. Like Ula understands, there's no machlokas in that case. Then the Mishnah continues. However, if you have two completely separate things, nothing to do with olives and radishes, you have two completely separate things, which Ula will understand means that they are the same bracha. So now we have machlok. Is which one do you say the bracha on first? Rabbi Yehuda says you say the bracha on the olive because it's from Shiva Saminim. And the Rabbanan say you say the bracha on whichever one you prefer. This entire clause is added into this Mishnah. Now, we had said that the machlokas was, at least according to one opinion, where all the fruits have the same bracha. And the question is, which one gets a bracha first? So now the Gemara says, what is the order of brachos within the Shavas Haminim? So the Gemara says, for that we have a pasuk where we where Hashem lists off, where Moshe Rabbeinu lists off the special fruits that Eretz Yisrael was blessed with. And he lists as follows, Eretz, a land, he says, Chita of wheat, Seira, barley, Geffen, grapes, Te'ena, figs, Remine, pomegranates, Eretz again, Zeis, Shemen, that's olives, Udvash is honey, which comes from the dates. So this is the order, this is the Pasuk used for determining the order. That is what this Pasuk is for, at least according to Rabbi Yosef, or possibly Rabbi Yitzchak. However, the Gemara says not everybody agrees to that. Rabbi Hanan disagrees. He says this Pasuk is not for that. This Pasuk is to tell us the order. This Pasuk is to tell us the importance of these fruits 
as far as measuring sizes in the Torah. Each food mentioned in the Pasuk is used for measuring a size. What are they? So as follows. Chita, wheat, is used to determine the length of eating, the length of time that constitutes one eating session, which we say is a Kedei Achilas Pras, the time it takes to eat one slice of bread, and that's only wheat bread. So that's what wheat is used for. The halacha that the Gemara quotes that that's enough Gemina for is if somebody enters a house that is menuga, it has taras. So if he's in there long enough, the clothing that he's wearing becomes tummy. And the length of time is the time to sit down and eat a meal. The Gemara also mentions Agav that clothing which he's carrying becomes tummy automatically. And he himself becomes tummy automatically. This halacha only applies to clothing that he's wearing. Now the Gemara says, Sa'ira, what is that for? Because a barley kernel is the size in which a piece of bone is metame, somebody who's carrying it, or it's metame, somebody who's in the room with it. Grapes, what's that for? That's for a share of revius, a liquid measure in which a nazir violates uh, his halacha of not drinking wine, and there are many other issues which also use the term revius. These are only revius of wine. Rashi explains that a revius of water is less because the liquid is not as thick. Te'ena, what's that for? Te'ena is a gregaris. Uh, a gregaris is the minimum size that one is violating the halach of Shabbos if he carries it on Shabbos outside of a private rishos. A remain, what's that for? Uh, pomegranate, that's for when a kli becomes ruined that is no longer usable because if somebody gets a hole in his kli, he'll just use it for a fruit which is larger. And uh, smaller fruits will fall out, but the larger fruits won't. But if he has a hole the size of a remind that a remind will fall out of, he throws it out. That's not useful for anything anymore, and therefore the kli is useless. And uh, it's halachos change in a number of things. Now, olives. Gemara says olives. What do you mean? Olives are every halacha in the world is olives. Gemara says every halacha in the world. We have a whole list of things that are not olives. Gemara says, yeah, the standard size of eating that you're chayev, let's say for eating chaylev, or blood, or nicer, leftover carbonus, these are all go by the share of an olive size. And then Mar says, now, the dates, what is that for? That's a kaseves. Kaseves, a large kaseves is the minimum size where one is violating the halacha of fasting on Yom Kippur, if he eats uh, a fruit that's that size. Okay, so this is what this Pasuk is for, all these different sizes. Now the Gemara says, okay, according to the other one, why doesn't he learn that way? The other sheet says, this Pasuk can't be for the sizes, because these sizes are all derabbanan, you can't have a Pasuk about it. Yeah, there's uh, smachtas, there are hints to it in the Torah, but the actual halacha of all these sizes is all derived by the Rabbanon. Now the Gemara quotes an incident which helps, which helps us determine how to learn the order of priority of the brachos of the Shiva Saminim from this Pasuk of Eretz Chita. The Gemara says the following thing happened. If Chiz and Rav Nuna were sitting together at a meal and they brought out dates and remains. Rav Nuna went and he made a bracha on the date before the remind. So Rav Chiz asked him, he said, what do you mean? The Pasuk has remind listed before dates. The dates is the last thing in the Pasuk. Remind is fifth. So Rav Nuna answered, no, it doesn't go by the order in the Pasuk from beginning to end. It goes by the proximity to the word Eretz. Rimain is the last thing in the list of the first Eretz. The words are Eretz, Chito, Sa'ira, Vegefen, Usaina, Verimain. Rimain is number five from the word Eretz. But then it says Eretz again, and the list starts over. And it says Shem Devash. So the dates are the second from Eretz here, and therefore they take priority over Rimain because Rimain is five from Eretz, and the dates are only two from Eretz. So he said to him, Wow, I wish I had legs of steel so I could follow you around all over and learn these wonderful halachas from you. Okay, now the Gemara quotes another incident which we're going to learn another halacha from, and this is going to be the halacha of when you say a bracha in the middle of a meal. So generally, we say that bread covers the bracha for everything in the meal because everything that comes during the meal is a side to the bread. The bread is, the meal is built around bread because it's filling, and then there are other things you eat along with it as complementary. The Gemara is going to analyze this halacha in depth over here as follows. The Gemara says the following incident happened. They brought grapes and figs in the middle of a meal. So Rav Huna said you have to make a bracha rishona on these fruits. You don't have to make a bracha achrona. What's the reason for that? Because they're not really included in the bread. They're not relative to the bread. But when you say brachas and mazah on the bread, that includes these things because they are also 
filling you up. So Mozon covers them as well. That is Rav Huna's opinion. Rav Nachman says the same thing. Rav Shesh is whoever disagrees, and he says they require a bracha before and a bracha after, because there's no such thing as a food that you make a bracha before and not a bracha after. If they're not part of the meal, they're not part of the meal. You say a bracha rishona and a bracha achrona. Anyway, says Rav Chia has a different halacha. He says you don't make a bracha on anything during a meal. Bread covers everything, and wine covers every drink. Now, the Gemara says as follows, Rav Papa tells us what the halacha is. Now, in order to explain this, I'm going to go with Tosus' opinion. There's a number of different sheets we've shown him here. Rashi learns one way, Tosus learns another way, and Tosus learns as follows. The halacha is, something which is part of the meal does not require a bracha. Not a first, not a bracha vishona, not a bracha achrona. It's included in the bracha on the bread, both the hamotzi and the bracha samazon. What is included in something which is part of the meal? Meat, fish, all these things are part of a meal. The bread defines the meal, and therefore it does not get a separate bracha. However, something which is not really normally part of a meal, like fruits, that gets a bracha before it. You say a eitz on it, or a hadama, and you do not say a special bracha achrona. It's covered by the bracha samazon, which you'll say at the end, because it is still filling you as well. Now, what if you stop eating bread and the bread is left on the side and now you just eat some other things this is similar to d- dessert so there the halacha the Gemara says is it requires a bracha rishona and a bracha achrona because it's not covered by the bread because you finished with the bread and you're just eating dessert now Tysus points out that in our days we're never finished with the bread the bread is always around and therefore you would never say a bracha achrona you would always be covering everything by bracha samazon you would say however a separate bracha rishona on dessert now the Gemara says as follows what is the reason that you don't make a special bracha on most things in the middle of a meal Mitzayim answered because it's covered by the bread it's part of the bread meal and it's covered by the mm, bread as we've been explaining so they asked him, so if that's true, how can you say a bracha on wine in the middle of the meal? It should also be covered by the bread, it's also part of the meal. He answered, no, wine is very chashev, and wine therefore always gets its own bracha.